Greetings, dearest Rita. <laughs> Welcome to my basement. I am Anna Alexander, and we are here for the season three premiere of Bridgerton. It has been a while. It has been a while. Now, to remind y'all, because it's been so long, I read The Duke and I many, many, many years ago. I did not read the rest of the books. I'm more of a paranormal romance girl, historicals here and there, but those are not my jam. I'm aware of the books. I know that Penelope and Colin are like season, not season, but like book four. We've skipped Benedict. I'm hoping Benedict gets a decent story sooner rather than later. And part of me is kind of like, maybe we should give Pollen another year to simmer and stew, but it'll be about what, another two, three years before the next season come out. So bring them on now, bring them on now. So I am excited to get to it. And I know that you are as well. So we're going to get comfy cozy underneath the big cozy blanket. I also have with me because it is the season premiere. I am drinking a cocktail that is out of the Bridgerton entertainment book. I bought it from my sister at Christmas. This was one of the confections in there. This is called the bee's knees. It's gin, honey water, and lemon. It's a little bit tart. Gin's not my wheelhouse, but we're drinking it today. What are you drinking? Let me know because I am curious. Also, please remember full episode watch along is available on Patreon. I would love to see you there. And if you're ready, so am I. So let's get to it. So we are, are we at the start of the newest marriage season, although they're not dressed in their white gowns, so maybe not. We have been apart for far too long. At last, London's fashionable set has made its return, and so too. Okay, so Miss Featherington, how are you s affording your current lifestyle? The crop this year appears to be rather dazzling. There is the exquisite Miss Malhotra, <laughs> said to be quite a catch. Miss Stowell is thought to be a most accomplished young lady. So at least she's being polite to these other women. And let us not forget, should we all need a little excitement, there is another Bridgerton making her debut this year. Perhaps she's been stunned into silence by the beauty of that giant feather. Perhaps she has swallowed that giant feather. <laughs> Would you mind asking whoever is playing downstairs to quiet me down so I might hear? I can try, but is that not in fact? Do oh, it. Who else will be playing piano forte in this is, house? Is Francesco already downstairs? <laughs> Wasn't she like 10 last season? <laughs> I must say, all those piano lessons in Bath have reaped their reward. You've gotten rather good. Man, the fella's suits are crisp. Crisp this year. The gowns are always exquisite. But these suits. And I don't know if you've seen it. Bath and Body Works. You can get a Bridgerton coat as the holder of your hand sanitizer. And it's so flipping cute. For our young ladies will certainly need someone dashing at whom to set their caps. Now, Penn, you're not happy with Colin, but you're still hoping to see him. What's the fan trick? Or the handkerchief. Is that a brother? Colin? <laughs> <laughs> Did she know Colin was coming home that day? <gasps> hide! Hide, Ben, hide! <gasps> For of the status quo, this author quickly grows weary. Oh. Oh. Look at this intro. You must tell us all about your adventures. Yes, when you returned last season, we'd heard all about your toil across the Mediterranean. <laughs> Under what foreign sun did you apparently get so sturdy? I was nowhere and everywhere. I must know, who are you? 
What have you done with our brother? This time away was exactly what I needed. It has given me some sense of proportion. Proportion. Right. I should like some proportion. <laughs> 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 oh. oh, well, that's nice. Nice meeting. Interesting. Oh, Queen. Francesca Bridgerton, presented by her mother, the Right Honorable Dowager Lady Bridgerton. Even Eloise made it down the walkway, Francesca. Didn't she? I think she did. You have had good luck with Bridgertons. I don't know if the Queen has had good luck. Rather, it was an interesting journey. Someone's feeling his oats. That's for certain. Unquestionably, our wedding was much more beautiful than yours. I thought our <gasps> wedding was rather fine. Oh, the other one got married. I spent all of our dear departed Aunt Petunia's money in the process, Mr. Dankworth. Thank goodness Aunt Petunia died. Ha ha. Ha ha ha. She was a tiresome spinster who always had her nose in a book. She was not tiresome. She just did not care for either of you. Today we return to society in good standing, our finances in order, and without any man telling us what to do. <clears throat> the young Petunia story, no offence to the dead, but will anyone really believe that a spinster who never owned so much as a donkey cart would have a fortune to leave to you? Oh. Where is she? Not to pick a diamond at the presentation is one thing, but not to appear at an event arranged in her honor is another thing altogether. Oh, the queen is bored. Do you find yourself back in town for any particular reason? In search of something or someone? If you're asking if I came back to take a wife this season, I'm afraid the answer may disappoint. Although, if there is one thing I learned on my travels, it is forever to expect the unexpected. <laughs> oh, what a way to keep him on the hook. And she doesn't have Eloise with her either. Oh, she is all alone. If it isn't Penelope Featherington, back in a dress, the colour of Eloise. Oh, there you are. I've been looking everywhere for you. <gasps> oh, they have been hanging out. Go and get some lemonade. And Cressida looks like she's wearing a couch. But ultimately, it is London where I'm most at home. And the season will be all the better now I have you by my side. Yeah, so if Cressida's such a catch, why isn't she married yet? He should be handsome, romantic, but above all else, it should be someone who gives me butterflies just by looking at him. Good luck, girls. Good luck. With any luck, he'll be caught up by the first ball. Let us hope so. With two sisters out in society this season, the work has only just begun. I want to see a Violet story. I want to see a second romance, second romance story for Violet. Forgive me, I will move into a dowel house as soon as I find one. Do not worry. Back in India, mothers stay in the home long beyond their children's wedding. I'm grateful to have you close. It's not, and it's not as if the house is tiny. There's space. They got space. Are you enjoying the festivities today? Very much. Cheers to the hats. My travels. I cannot begin to share my travel adventures with you. If I did, you would swoon. Why? How is it possible that your dance cards for the season are not yet full of suitors? <laughs> <laughs> In my stories from abroad, I'm not for such tender young ladies. Were I to tell you even the tiniest adventure, well, I would be forced to marry you. Where did this massive flirt come from? Such an array of beautiful ladies. <laughs> Men will be fighting over you. I cannot compete. He was
was not always this flirty, was he? Pen, it is good to see you. Is it? Truly, it has felt like I've been absent years instead of months. Things seem to have fundamentally changed. Am I mistaken, or was Eloise walking arm in arm with Cressida Calpher? As you said, sometimes time moves rather quickly. Why didn't you tell us sooner that one of us would be the new Lady Featherington? We're both married women. Must we tell a baker to bake? Well, technically, one of our sons would be the new Lord Featherington. <laughs> one of us would simply be the heir's mama. One of mm -hmm. us? You think technically, when I'm the heir's mama, the first necessity would be ridding the house of dusty books. Neither of you will be inheriting anything if you do not go home and get to work. That means go home and shag ladies. I would have said something else, but I'm trying to keep this PG. I take comfort in knowing that you will always be here to take care of me. <gasps> oh! 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 Well, that's the job she's putting on Pen. <laughs> now I'm sure it wasn't done, but Pen, how much money have you saved? And can you strike out anywhere? She could go anywhere, any city, right? And and start a new life because it wasn't as if they had a a paper trail. To see if your story was true. That had to be verified. Oh, she's gonna burn some clothes. I do not wish to see a citrus color ever again. But what has brought about this sudden desire for change? I cannot live at home any longer. I must take a husband before that happens. I hope the two of them are really, really good friends. I can see them being good friends and Penn needs a good friend. Perhaps something like what they're wearing in Paris. Oh, I love it, brother. Where's it from? Uh, trader in Marseille. France and Spain. No, my chic music is Italian. Exactly how many cities did you visit in four months? No, not in here, outside, where our mother can't sit. <laughs> Will his family ever be on time? A gift for you, mother. How big were Colin's bags? He brought a lot of stuff back. Lady Vassadar nearly ruined me last season. I lost the battle and I have no appetite for the war, so I've joined the winning side. Not unlike you, I take it. Or is this truly the new you? A man cannot tell his secrets. Mm. Must be lonely. For some reason, I had this thought of how many Colin Bridgertons did he leave across the European countryside on his four months away? I've been hoping we would meet. Did not seem so when you were hiding away in the countryside this summer. I avoided society because I did not know if you'd want to see me. Eloise, I am so sorry about everything. For what you did? Or because I discovered it was you who wrote such damning things? You may not understand what I did, but I was only trying to protect- No, oh, I do not need your explanations. I have kept your secret exactly because I do not wish to keep revisiting the past. Oh, but you're gonna stew in it, it appears. I wish you very well, Penelope. Okay, Penelope, now is the time to just start fresh. Well, I wanted to thank you for taking care of the estate while I was on honeymoon. In truth, I enjoyed having a purpose. Whereas now that you're back, I'm not certain what I'm supposed to do exactly. Where are your art classes? He was taking art classes, yes? Are you aware, Mrs. Mondrich, of your great aunt, Lady Kent? We met once. Very cold lady. She is colder now, I am afraid. Has well, she left us something? She has not left you something. She has left your son, Nicholas, everything. Okay. While you have several cousins who are more closely related to her, none have male children. Ah. Nicholas shall be the next Baron of Kent. Ah. <laughs> and what does that entail? What business dealings have you just inherited on behalf of your son? Perhaps we might need drinks. And how old is their son? When I told my oldest that I was going to start watching Bridgerton, she was like, Newton's in the first episode! That was what she was most excited for, was Newton. I would think the Viscount would have a bigger bed. Unless that's the Viscountess's bed. Does she have her own room? Mm, ignore them. I cannot. <laughs> What's happening out there kind of is important. What's happening down here? Making it air. <laughs> the flowers are always so gorgeous. I should like to try something a little different tonight. Oh, 
she has a picture. Oh, and she got sparkly shoes to match, too. Wow. Lady Danbury, you have outdone yourself once again. As you know, the first ball is no small thing. I do not take it lightly. And where is Edwina? Will we see her again? Pardon me, miss. We failed to collect your clothes. So everyone's wearing pastels, but Penelope? Is that what's happening? Are you staring at us? Jealousy, my love. Oh yeah, she's the only one in a jewel toad. It is not us they stare at. And nobody saw Penelope when she was coming down the stairs at the house. If she wants to wear such a melancholy color, that's her prerogative. Melancholy color! She is radiant. Head up, Pen, head up! Own the room! Own the room! Someone's in their shot. Someone's in their shot. Pleasure to see you. What a striking gown you have on. You, you as well, my lord. Uh, <laughs> not, not the gown part, obviously, the first part. It is a, a pleasure to see you all in your proper evening dress, which is not at all gown like. Maybe she should have. You genuinely enjoyed She should have practiced in front of me a few times. There is simply so much one can do with it. For example, since you have asked, the stem stitch, tried and true, the straight stitch. Well, you asked, Eloise. She asked. Can of worms. Do you not have a favorite, Miss Eloise? The uh, shift stitch. I'm not familiar with that. One. It is the one that shifts this conversation, perhaps to something besides embroidery. A jest. How clever. You were saying, Lord Barnell. I was going to say, perhaps we should take our leave, lest we remain too long and give Lady Whistledown something to write about. <sighs> ah. Oh. Penelope, you can do this. You can do this. I believe it was Lady Whistledown who named the diamond the first year. <gasps> How right she was about the Duchess. Hmm. What does that look? What was that look? And your other interests. Who are you besides your hobbies? Yes. What do you desire? What do you despise? What makes you tick? Do they care? Really? Do they care? My brother needs me. If you would excuse me one moment. Did nobody take these girls to practice how to talk with another person? Penelope. Oh. Let's have the two of them team up. He really ought to take to the floor again. Once one finds oneself in the wall, it is difficult to come off it. At least the wall is not asking what makes me tick. You do not much like attracting notice, do you? Not really. It seems as though every Bridgerton was born to attract notice. I am different from my siblings as well. Can be difficult, can it not? For some of us, notice is very slight. For adults? Of course, my lord. Of course. You really ought to take to the floor again. It's difficult to come off the wall once you are on it. You can do this, Ben. You can do this. That is something to consider. That every time you go to this a ball, you're expected to find a forever partner. Somehow, some way. That is the expectation. <laughs> Are you well, Miss Featherington? Oh, it's him. Cold headache. From the ice cream or from the very congenial looking miss with the sneer? Do not worry. I have been the recipient of an untold number of withering looks. So does she know who he is? Does she know who he is? Have they crossed paths before? Lord Debney, is it not? Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <coughs> Uh, excuse me, I am <gasps> oh, oh, how mortifying. Bitch! Perhaps if you had not bought such cheap fabric, it would not have ripped. <laughs> Says the woman with mops on her shoulders. Uh, do excuse me, just a moment. <laughs> I need a man just available to hand me my hand glass too. You can do this pen, you can do this pen! Why are you looking so soon? Especially in such a charming dress. 
Do not mock me, please. I assure you I'm quite serious. The colour rather suits you. Is something wrong? Pen, between us, I mean, if you are going to make me say it out loud, I miss you. You miss me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you miss me, but you had never caught me, is that correct? I overheard you. Of course you had never caught me. I am the laughing stock of the town, even when I changed my entire wardrobe. It just never occurred to me that you of all people could be so cruel. Oh! <gasps> Oh, Penelope, you might need to go over that a couple of times before you send that off because, because, because you're writing in anger. First draft, okay, fine, let it all out. Second, third draft, pull it back, pull it back, pull it back. I do that when I send work emails. <laughs> send it to my cover. Read this first and check for snark. <laughs> there is um, a gentleman here to see you, ma'am. What were they called? Not legislators. Um. I work for the Crown, responsible for ensuring the lines of succession run smoothly within our great families. Ew. He's been busy, though. Yes, sir. My cousin, the swindler. That man was a terrible liar. I have in my possession a document he signed, granting the estate to one of your daughters once she produces a male heir. The terrible liar. <laughs> that document is valid. From the terrible liar. Even a broken clock is right twice a day. <laughs> it would be quite a task transferring the estate to another family. But should I find that this rather convenient document is in fact forged before one of your girls has an heir, the upheaval may indeed be necessary. Do you have nothing else to do with your time then, sir? I shall pay another visit to you very soon. And say six weeks time. Such a beautiful home. I would like it for myself. Thankfully, I do not have much competition this season. Aside from Francesca, who stirred a good deal of interest, I suppose. <laughs> she doesn't count Eloise's competition. <laughs> I thought we did not like Penelope. What you did was cruel and unnecessary. You often talk of how difficult it has been for you to find a husband. But do you not think it might be easier if you displayed a bit less frankness? the future. Instead of saying she's really bitchy, she's a bit frank. But the season has a way of coming between young ladies, pitting us against one another. I suppose I've fallen prey to it. But whatever Penelope did to lose your friendship, you are right. She is undeserving of my attention and of yours. How are your meetings? Not nearly as good as our bed. Should we return to it? Mm. However does he get anything done? Your mother enjoys being Viscountess so much. And I've never seen you happier than when you're away from the duty of running this place. So why not put ourselves first for once and extend the honeymoon? Forever! Honeymoon forever and forever and forever. You've a visitor, miss. And what do you want, sir? An unchaperoned visit. Hmm. And I'm most certainly not ashamed of you, Pen. I seek you out at every social assembly because I know you will lift my spirits and make me see the world in ways I could not have imagined. You are clever and warm and... I still will not court you. I am proud to call you my very good friend. Mm -hmm. If a husband is what you seek, let me help you. Help me how? And what I have learned is that charm can be taught. We will have lessons and you will quickly master them, I'm certain. There is nothing more I want and to earn back the favor of the one person who has always truly made me feel appreciated. But whom I will never court. Is that Whistledown? What did Lady Whistledown read? When the tide of change turns. Read it. I don't even know what I just said that. But you know what I mean. Well, you know what I mean. Especially for the unprepared. <gasps> oh, he's so tiny. Welcome to your new home. While others are clinging firmly to that which they already know, none more so than our queen, who has still yet to choose a diamond. Ooh. This author wonders if her hesitancy is a symptom of fortitude or fear. Ooh. Your serve, your majesty. <laughs> Seems Lady Whistledown is playing games again. I think she enjoys it. I think that's what makes 
the season so much more enjoyable. I do love a game, especially when I am so often the victor. You of all people would be quite interested in today's issue, Penelope. Lady Whistledown has a good deal to say about the precious Bridgertons. Call it, in fact. <gasps> Whatever she has said about him, she is wrong. Oh! Dare I say, this author is ready to play oh, no. as well. I do not fear change. Oh! I embrace it. And then there are some who take the embrace of change a step too far. What are you reading? Nothing. Don't have to give it to him. <laughs> Eat it. You are mentioned. Again. <laughs> As with Mr. Colin Bridgerton, who seems to have embraced a new personality entirely. But one must wonder, is this new character the real him or simply a ploy for attention? It's not, it's not entirely an invalid of a question. I do not care what Lady Whistledown writes about me, but ruining Miss Thompson and then nearly ruining you, I will never forgive her. If I ever find out, I will make sure it is her life that is ruined. That's episode six or seven then, right? Six or seven? So we are off and running, I think. We've gotten a few steps in. I can see why everybody I know binged this in my day. Cause like, what's gonna happen next? They did leave off at a really good, good point. I think Anthony R.K. is just gonna be boinking the whole season. We can forget about them. Will we see Daphne? I don't think we do. I don't think we see Daphne. Eloise and Cressida, when I heard that was a thing, was started off for me as a, huh? But seeing them, getting a little bit more of the backstory, interesting. I think their friend group, Eloise and Penelope's friend group, I think needs to be a little bit bigger. So I hope Penelope and the Modiste, I cannot remember her name, I hope they become good friends and I hope Francesca gets a friend or two because we don't see her with any other friends or hear her talking about anybody that she can kind of hook her arm with while she navigates the season. The Featheringtons. So did their, was their estate essentially saved because they took the money Jack swindled from everybody else and they kept that? Was that what happened? I don't remember. I know Endgame is Colin and Penelope. It's a romance novel. That's how it works. It's about the journey, not the destination. However, there's a part of me that hopes Penelope, <laughs> although I don't think it's going to happen, I want her to end up with somebody else. She has been pining for this guy, this boy, forever. He comes back a man who is, has been changed by his adventures. That is fine. That is fine. But has never once given her any indication that he sees her as more than a friend. She has, okay, no opportunities, but if she really lets herself open, I want her to take those other opportunities. I want her to move on. I, I know that's not, again, the point, but I kind of hope she ends up with somebody At this point in time, Colin doesn't deserve her. <laughs> How will the queen play into all of this? I wonder if she needs to, if at all. She's just kind of there right now. Same with Miss Lady Danbury. They're just kind of there. And I always find them very intriguing. That's why I think we need a Violet Lady Danbury. Lady, and Lady Danbury and Violet need their own season. They need a matron season. Okay, but we're off and running season three, episode one. How did you feel about testing the waters? And would you want to see Penelope end up with anybody else? I would be intrigued to know. So thank you so much for joining me. If you haven't already, hit subscribe so you know when the next video drops. And as always, this is my little reminder to stand, stretch your bodies, try to touch your toes. If you haven't a while, go eat something and then come back and watch the next video in the queue. So thanks again, y'all. And until next time.